Bonjour y'all, my name is Brita and today on Witch Tuesday Night, I'm quickly going over all of the details that you need to know for the upcoming Dolores Umbridge Lethal Adversaries event in Harry Potter Wizards Unite. As always, thank you to Niantic again Warner Brothers for providing me with this information early so I can this video for all of you. <sighs> this is my first Wizards Unite event guide that I have filmed since finding out that Wizards Unite is ending on January 31st, 2022. <sighs> so yeah, this is this is not easy for me. I think traveling and going to the conjuration just really kept me focused and occupied and, and busy. And now that I am home, I am just sitting with my feelings <laughs> and it's hard. Tuesday, I didn't get dressed. I, Monday night, I slept 12 hours. Like, I, yeah, it was a lot of sleep. Um, and I, I didn't do much on Tuesday. And now when I'm filming this, you know, I had ideas. I was like, oh, I'm gonna put on my umbrage outfit and do another little skit. But I just, I have no energy. And I just need to get through this. <laughs> create a video guide for all of you. So, the Dolores Umbridge Lethal Adversaries event will be Friday, November 12th through Monday, November 15th, starting and ending at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Like most Lethal Adversary events, we will have tasks and rewards. We will have a free store pack as well as premium store packs. Because this is another new adversary, we don't know all of the stats. <laughs> we don't know how difficult Dolores Umbridge is going to be. We don't know who her guards are. We don't know how difficult they are going to be. But because we already had the Barty Crouch Jr. Lethal Adversaries event, we at least know a starting point. We know, we know that Dolores Umbridge and her guards will be more difficult than Barty Crouch Jr. and his guards. And they were super difficult, y'all. So... I'm going to go over the tasks and rewards. I'm going to share some advice from the community. And yeah, let's, let's get into it. All right, like we, see, like we saw with the Barty Crouch Junior Adversaries event, there will be two sets of tasks and a bonus assignment. So the first set of tasks, also infographic right here. Use one edible dark mark. Return 10 centaur foundables. Oh, right. I totally forgot to mention. In addition to Dolores Umbridge being boosted, the brown centaur, the oddity, will be boost boosted on the map, and so will for runs. So use a ton of trace detection if you're having trouble finding them. You can also walk, walk, walk to visit new spawn points to find them. Okay, so return 10 centaur foundables. That can be either the oddity or the care of magical creatures. Uh, use six potions in adversary encounters. You will do this very quickly. And return eight fragments from Dolores Umbridge's page. Again, you will do that pretty quickly. So your individual rewards, of course, for all of that. And then you get three defense against the Dark Arts books, 500 wizarding XP, 60 gold, and 30 spell energy. It's a little frustrating to see that already from the first lethal adversaries event down to the second lethal adversaries event that spoiler alert tasks are getting more difficult and rewards are fewer which we saw this with all of the adversaries events over the past year but it's like the game is ending and lethal adversaries are really hard and not everybody has completed all of the nodes and their advanced adversarial combat so <laughs> already you're making the tasks more difficult and the rewards not as good like okay whatever okay second set of tasks return six Dolores umbridge's black quill fragments and you get six for review brain looks over that and like 
Okay, fine, whatever. Um, earn 1500 challenge XP through wizarding challenges and or adversary chains. That's pretty easy. Just drink your brain elixir and hop on the night bus. Deal 20,000 damage to adversaries. I don't have the exact list of stats for the Barney Crouch Jr. chain. Um, I have a screen recording of it, so I could find it, and I'm just too tired to do that. But because the legal adversaries, like, they are so difficult, like, their health is so ridiculously high, dealing 20,000 damage is not going to require you to defeat that many lethal adversaries. Now, if you are just defeating feared adversaries, yes, this might take a while, but just work on feared adversaries that appear on the map and you'll eventually deal with 20,000 damage. Um, and then turn six, Dolores Umbridge's educational decree fragments. So you get the individual rewards for all of that, and then you get three defense against the dark arts books, 500 wizarding XP, 60 gold, and 30 spell energy as your overall rewards. So then, of course, we have a bonus assignment. And this is where it's really obvious that they upped the difficulty because the rewards are identical. You get two spell books for each task that you complete. But the tasks are all way more difficult than they were for the Barty Crouch Jr. event. Return six Ferenc Foundables. Return six Dolores Umbridge's Feline Plate Fragments. Return six Dolores Umbridge's Wand Fragments. Defeat Dolores Umbridge three times. <laughs> you get two spell books for each of those tasks. And the overall rewards are five Defense Against Dark Arts books, 1,000 Wizarding XP, 40 Gold, and 30 Spell Energy. Some players experienced a bug in the Barney Crouch Jr. chain where they got kicked out of the encounter. So apparently that bug happens when you cast Maxima, the foe dodges, and then you try to cast Maxima again. Because the game is showing you incorrect data. You already cast the Maxima and the Faux Dodge, so the bar should reset to zero, but it is showing as full again. So to overcome this bug, then this is what you need to do. All right, so you cast Maxima and the Faux Dodges, and then your Maxima bar is incorrectly showing as full. You need to do regular spell casts. Do not try to cast Maxima. And then your challenge here will be counting your actions so that you know when the Maxima bar is recharged. So to recharge the Maxima bar, first of all, the amount of actions you need to take or charges you need to get is different for each guard and the final adversary. So the number of, of charges you need to fill up Maxima for at least the Barty Crouch Jr. chain is 8 for the first guard, 10 for the second guard, 10 for the third guard, and 12 for Barty Crouch Jr. That might be the same for Dolores Umbridge. If you want to be safe, maybe just add one to each of those if you are having to count. Then the number of charges you get for each action, if you drink a regular a simula potion, you get one for that action. If you drink a stronger simula potion, you get two for that action. If you drink a potent simula potion, you get three for that action. If you drink a healing potion, you get one for that action. A wit sharpening potion, you get two for that action. If you attack, you get two for that action. If you cast Protego, you get one for that action. So avoiding the bug is... <laughs> Definitely challenging. It requires math. It requires counting, um, which I know is frustrating. Maybe the bug will be fixed before this weekend. I don't know. But if you're trying to avoid getting kicked out of the encounter, that is what you need to do. Oh, which, yeah, I know. It's like, oh, why? I will say, Side note, for the most part, professors have not been treated fairly 
if you look at the math in the game, professors, well, this is like PG-13 language. We've been screwed over. So I guess the silver lining is that the foes are less likely to dodge against us. I never had a guard dodge me when I was playing during the Bardic Crouch Junior Adversaries event. And I definitely, like, I played enough that I completed the bonus assignment, but of course that was during Conjuration, so I was like a little busy. I did not grind during the weekend, but I never had a foe dodge my attack. Like, even my regular attacks, let alone my Maxima attacks. So I guess that is one of the perks of being a professor. Oh, and I'm only at 14 out of 15 nodes, and during the first half of the weekend, I was at 13. I was still earning my Defense Against the Dark Arts books to unlock that 14th node. So, yay professors! We finally have one single perk. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about Maxima in regards to the bug, of course, but Maxima is also a way that you can conserve your potion uses because you might have noticed that when you do a regular hit against any of the foes in the Bardic Crouch Stainer Chain, you don't really do a lot of damage. Even with your potent assimilative potion stacked with a Wit Sharpening Potion, which is what I did the entire time. Now, if you have tons of potions, you can just keep fighting as normal, do all of the attacks that you can. Also, if you're short on time, you might want to do that as well. However, if you're wanting to conserve your potions, especially those potent assimilos, because Snowdrop is always in short supply, then you can just cast Maxima. So, at the beginning of each new foe in the adversary chain, your Maxima attack bar is already completely full. And side note, if you are dealing with the bug and you're trying to count your things, you're not really sure how it works. If you are on the next foe, you're good. Because with the next foe, it always, always resets. You will always have the full Maxima attack bar. With the very first foe at the very beginning of the chain, go ahead and cast that Maxima attack without potions. Then, immediately drink a potent assimilative potion for three charges and a witch sharpening potion for two charges. Cast your Protego. And then don't attack. Wait until your use of healing potions and Protego attacks, plus that, that five bonus that you got from the, the potent and the witch sharpening, wait until your Maxima charge bar refills, and then attack with the potent and witch sharpening. So at least that first wait is not too long. The second wait will be a little bit longer because you still have your potent and witch sharpening active. You can't drink more of those. But then, yeah, you get the one charge each time you cast Protego. You get the one charge each time you drink a healing potion. And those charges will slowly add up until you have once again refilled your Maxima attack bar. Then you can attack again <laughs> with your potions active. So this is a slow process, of course, waiting for the Maxima attack bar to refill, but you are not, I don't want to say wasting, but you are not using your potions on attacks that are less effective. So again, this works if you have plenty of time and you're wanting to conserve the use of potions. Of course, if you're short on time, you might just want to do every attack. Plus, when you attack, you get two charges for the Maxima, so then you are refilling your Maxima faster, but you're also using your potions more quickly. So it really just depends on the resources that you have. If you have plenty of potions and you don't have very much time, just attack like normal. If you have plenty of time, but you don't have lots of potions, 
just use your maxima attack. It really is up to you and the resources that you have available. I realize some of this advice, especially with all the math, might be a little confusing. So definitely check out my article on Wizards Unite Hub where everything is broken down in, in written form, which might be easier for you to absorb. Also, I think I mentioned free store pack. That's pretty standard. It's the edible dark mark and some healing potions and some spell energy. Maybe a dark detector. I don't remember. I've also broken down the premium store packs on Wizards Night Hub. Spoiler alert, they're not a good value, which is just like, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's about all that I have for you all today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you to Nancy and Warren Brothers for providing me with this mission. Really excited for this video for all of you. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want more Wizards Unite content in the next two and a half months, subscribe to my channel. People have already been asking me, like, what am I going to do next? And first of all, I do, I totally appreciate that you are interested in me as a content creator, me as a person, and not just what I can provide in regards to Wizards Unite. So thank you. Thank you for your care, for your concern about me and for your interest in how I create. Truly appreciate that you guys are here and that you are supportive of me as an individual. But it's been a week and I am an emotional mess. So I have no idea how I'm going to pivot, which by the way, I hate that word because when the pandemic started, like I'm subscribed to a whole bunch of, you know, like blogging advice people and entrepreneurial people and all of that. And I got all of these emails in March, 2020 about how to pivot my online business. And I'm like, whoa, I just want to crawl underneath a blanket and read a book and pretend that my world is not completely falling apart. So I hate the word pivot. Unless we're talking about like a pivot turn and dance. And then it's like pivot turn, pivot turn, jazz dance. So I will always be creating content in some way or another. I've been blogging since I was 16. Okay. I started on Live Journal. That was actually my introduction to Harry Potter fandom was through Live Journal. But I don't know yet what I'm going to do with my YouTube channel. I have other Harry Potter content that I'm wanting to do, so maybe that will be part of what I do. I have other videos to edit for Hogwarts Mystery. But right now I really just need to sit with my feelings <laughs> and be sad while also keeping up my steady stream of Wizards Unite content. So I don't know what I'm going to do starting February 1st, but I will let you guys know once I have any idea. But subscribe to my channel <laughs> for more Harry Potter stuff for at least the next two and a half months. <laughs> okay, that's it. Once again, thank y'all so much for watching. Until next time, au revoir witches.